Good evening, this is Sarah Barik, and you're watching the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain TV. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safariya Palace the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, the RCO, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He, His Highness, introduced to His Majesty the participants of the 7th Annual Conference for Effective Partnerships and Information Sharing for Better Humanitarian Action, which was concluded today and held under the patronage of His Majesty the King by the RCO and Cop Cooperation with the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Action, the OCHA, and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Humanitarian Funds, the OICHF, with a participation of 250 individuals working in global humanitarian organizations. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his honor in meeting His Majesty the King and said that all countries capable of providing support should help those in need, stating that after the conferences and meetings, a number of solutions and ideas regarding the, effective, the effectiveness and speed of delivery of aid have been reached. إذا سمحت جات ملك اسمي باسم الإخوان والحضور الجميع نتشرف الله يطول عمرك بالسلام عليكم وبمقابلتكم في هذا المكان العامر الحقيقة طال عمرك كجميع أعضاء المؤسسة الخيرية نتشرف ومملكة البحرين ككل تتشرف بدعوة هؤلاء الخبرات ووجوه الخير للقيام والتفكير والعمل سويا تجاه الخير وتفعيل دور الخير والعطاء لكل من هو محتاج من الدول القادرة على المساعدة والله الحمد يا جاءة الملك أن نحن توصلنا في نهاية هذه اللقاءات والمؤتمر إلى حلول وأفكار جديدة في فعالية الأدوار وسرعة الإيصال المساعدات والطرق الجديدة المتبعة والله الحمد طويل العمر هالرجال خير من يمثل بلادهم وأتمنى من السيد أبراين أنه يلقي بعض من الإيجاز البسيط بعد المؤتمر لكم صاحب جلالة وهو رئيس منظمة الأوتشا في اليو أن Very much indeed for welcoming us so warmly uh, with this very large delegation and we are delighted to have this opportunity first of all to thank uh, your majesty uh, most sincerely for your kind patronage of the 7th conference on effective humanitarian partnership and the immense hospitality that you have offered to all participants. So thank you sure. on behalf of us all. And I do bring my uh, Secretary General's personal greetings to you from New York and he very much uh, looks forward to the next time you have the opportunity to, to meet him. Right. Um, for me it is a 
personal pleasure. It is my first time back in Bahrain since 1977, when I was a very young man, and I had the honor and the privilege to meet the Emir, your father. Exactly. And I uh, treasure that memory, and I pay tribute uh, to his memory. <coughs> ليس بغريب أن أشكركم وأنا أقف بين يديكم فأنتم أهلا للشكر والثناء وأنا الذي أتلقى الشكر من الناس لوصله لجلالتكم يوميا لما تقومون به من أعمال خيرية وإنسانية ومشاريع مفيدة جدا لآلاف المتضررين تعدت حدود مملكتنا الغالية لتصل إلى أقاصي الدنيا لا أريد أن أضيف على ما قاله دينم والعمل الخيري واللي عمل الخير في قلبه مثل ما وضحت لي طول العمر على سمو الشيخ ناصر ولا على كلام سيد أوبراين عن نجاح المؤتمر اللي كان فعلا مميز بتعاون الجميع نشكر كل المنظمين طبعا على راسهم رعايتك الكريمه للمؤتمر عدد المشاركين اكثر من المتوقع اوراق العمل اكثر من الرسمي كانوا جايين ناس باوراق في حقائقهم ودهم يساهمون واجتماعات الجانبيه مثل ما تفضل سيد براين وتشجيع من الجميع اللي امامك طول العمر كل واحد تحت ملايين من الناس اللي يساعدهم ويدعمهم كلهم مؤسسات كبيره وجباره ان نجمعهم على ارض الخير هالشيء رائع بس الا اريد ابغى اقول شيء طال عمرك قبل خمس سنوات يوم بدات أزمة السوريه طلبتوا مني ان اروح الى الاردن والحدود السوريه لتقديم المساعده ورحت يوم الاثنين رجعت ثلاثة قلت عملت اتفاق تذكر الشيخ احمد لشراء مواد مليون دولار للاجئين اللي كانوا يتدفقون انا موجود على الحدود يوم ما جيت قلت لا الاردنيين كرماء ما راح ينقصهم اكل بس ابغي مدارس فحاولنا نقنعك ان المحل مو للمدارس على الحدود وفي البر فأصريت رجعت يوم الخميس وأردت أعلن يوم الأحد في البرلمان كان عندنا 48 ساعة أيمن المفلح موجود اجتمع مع وزير التربية الأردني مع اليونسيف مع المقاول في 48 ساعة حسب توجيهات والموافقات الهاتفية مع سمو الشيخ ناصر في 48 ساعة وقعنا الاتفاقية وبنينا أربع مدارس تحتضن الآن 9000 طالب في 21 يوم رقم قياسي بأي درجة لا يمكن أن ننفذ هذا الشيء لولا رؤيتكم الحكيمة القوية إلا الآن شفنا نتائجها وملاك اللي راح تتكلم قصة نجاح وهي تمثل آلاف الطلاب والطالبات اللي نجحوا في مدارسكم في الأردن يدل على نظرتكم البعيدة فأنا أعتذر لو أنا كان رأيي غير صحيح في البداية بس مقتنع أن لازم دائما نتبع كلام البوس أن يور أيديا وذا ستروك أوف جينيوس مثل ما يقول ستيفن أوبراين ثانك يو سير After that Malak Farooq Al Shouli a 10th grade Syrian refugee who is studying in the Bahrain Academic Complex in Al Zaatari camp, located in the Kingdom of Jordan, delivered a speech in which she expressed gratitude for the Bahraini-funded school that she says rescued all the children who lost all hope of success in the future due to the lack of education. His Majesty the King received. Malik, I'm a Syrian student, like any student in وصلت لأرض اللجوء بلا كتب بلا دفاتر بلا قلم أتكئ عليه للوصول إلى حلمي ولكن قوة الإرادة هي التي كانت تدفعني للخروج من ذلك الصندوق 
الذي ربما تحولت حياتي إليه أنذاك بعيدا عن التفاصيل أشرقت المدرسة البحرينية في مخيم الزعتري فكانت أشبه بحلم أو رحلة لاكتشاف الذات بالنسبة لكثير من الشباب والأطفال الذين فقدوا الأمل بالوصول إلى شاطئ الأمان من خلال العلم والتعليم فكانت هذه المدرسة بمثابة السفينة التي تجاوزنا بها مرحلة الخلل في التعليم His Majesty then expressed thanks and appreciation to the UN and especially to its Secretary General, Mustafa Sayyid, for their contributions regarding humanitarian affairs, highlighting his role in voluntary works. His Majesty welcomed the participants of the conference, adding that this visit is an opportunity to show the achievements of the people of Bahrain. His Majesty added that these achievements were made possible due to the good education people received, stressing that education is the foundation of a developed society. His Majesty the King also highlighted the significant role of Bahraini women in developing the country. وقمتوا بأكثر الحقيقة من اللي طلب منكم وهذا نتيجة ضمائركم الحقيقة الحية ومشاعركم اتجاه إخوانكم وبناتكم وأبنائكم في مختلف أصقاع المنطقة والعالم فيعني تجمعكم والاتفاق على برنامج يؤدي إلى النجاح في موضوع التعاون وإيصال الأمور إلى المكان اللي يجب أن تصل إليه هذا من أهم الأهداف فشكرا على الحضور وعلى تداولكم لأمور الخير والنظرة الإنسانية نشكر هيئة الأمم كذلك والأمين العام ورئيس المنظمة على يعني حضوره ومساهمته وصبره وجلده على هذا العمل إنسان متابعته للأمور الاعتيادية في مكانة فيها نوع من التعب والصبر فكيف العمل في مناطق فيها الوعر وفيها البعد وفيها التعب لكن سبحان الله الأمور هذه تعطي الإنسان دافع أن يعمل أخ مصطفى السيد ما يقصر وين ما يجيه الأمر يتوجه وأحيانا ترى هو ما يجيه أمر هو اللي يطلب وهو اللي يتطوع إلى هذا العمل ويروح راح مناطق كثيرة الحقيقة وزار مناطق كثيرة وساهم مساهمات بأفكاره وبعمله كثيرة على كل حال أهم شيء وهو مبتسم فهذه البسمة هي قوة الحقيقة لكل من يريد العمل في هذا المجال لأن المناظر والمواقف والحالات اللي يشوفها الإنسان ما هي بسيطة فيتطلب منه الحقيقة أن يتقبل هذه الأمور بنفس طيبة وبشعور طيب وطبعاً هو لما يكون هدفه ونيته إنسانية فلا شك بيكون سعيد أنه يقوم بهذا العمل يعني ما لنا هدف آخر لا هي دعاية ولا هي تجارة ولا هي أي شيء آخر بل هي خدمة لله ول أبنائنا والبناتنا اللي يعزون علينا على كل حال واليوم العالم أصبح يقال قرية متقارب بالاتصالات والمواصلات فاللي يحدث في أقاصي العالم كأنه حادث عندك نسمع عن حوادث ومشاكل تحدث مثلا في آخر العالم نتألم من حدوثة لأن سمعنا عنها وشفناها وطالما أن الله مرهي على الإنسان أنه يقوم ويساهم فليش لا يساهم هذا أجرها عظيم عند رب العالمين وهي كذلك فرصة زيارتكم للبحرين كم تطلعون على أمور بلدكم 
وإذا عندكم وقت تعرفون على المنجزات فالمنجزات منجزات أهل البحرين يعني في كل مجال ما هي بسيطة منجزات الدل على أعلى مستوى ممكن أن يكون في أي دولة متحضرة والأساس والسبب هو التعليم فلذلك لما أخ مصطفى تكلم عن التعليم وقناة أولوية بالنسبة للمخيمات فهو لأنه الأساس في الواقع في كل شيء فالبحرين اليوم يعني احنا نفخر بأن 63% من النساء في البحرين خريجات جامعة 63% والباقي ترى دارسين يعني ما بدنا مو بدارسين ويمكن بعضهم بعد شهاداتهم اللي من الحياة أعلى من الجامعة وتشكل النساء يمكن 53% من موظفين الدولة الحكومة 53% وهذا شيء جيد الحقيقة ما أعتقد في دولة في العالم وصلت هذه النسبة ما أظن وفي القطاع الخاص العمال التجارة تشكل 40% المرة تعمل لابس الاوفر هول تشتغل مع الناس ماشي فهذا مجتمع متطور جدا واكبر دليل على تطوره ان ان وضع هدف للمغرضين لان المغرض ما اعتقد بيستهدف دوله فاشل هو هو يريد يفشل الدول فلما يستهدف الدول الناجحه هذا اكبر دليل ان هي ناجحه His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has sent a cable to the President of the Republic of Lebanon Michel Aoun congratulating him on his election by the Lebanese Parliament His Majesty confirmed that this step will establish security and maintain the country's organization and protect them from outside interferences that affect security and stability. He, His Majesty affirmed the Kingdom's supporting position to Lebanon's security and stability and expressed the Kingdom's aspirations to the strengthen the relation between the two countries. His Majesty the King expressed his wishes of further progress and development to President Aoun and the Lebanese people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable to the President of the Republic of Lebanon, Michel Aoun, congratulating him on his election by the Lebanese Parliament. In the cable, His Royal Highness expressed his wishes of development and progress to President Aoun and the Lebanese people and also affirmed the Kingdom's care to consolidate the brotherly relations between the two countries. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today a number of the royal family members and state officials. He noted the positive effect of Bahrain's national competencies, which the government relies on in its march towards development. The Prime Minister added that global institutions have noted the development of the kingdom due to the proficiency of its human resources. He expressed pride in the honoring that Bahrainis receive in global and international events. He affirmed that the government continues to adopt creative initiatives which help push human development forward based on the government's strong belief in the importance of the Bahraini citizen.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Khadibiya Palace a number of participants in the second Turkey GCC Business and Investment Forum, where he proposed the establishment of a Gulf Turkish partnership aiming at various economic aspects and allowing maximum benefit from active investments in the two parties. His Royal Highness stated that both Gulf Cooperation Council countries and Turkey have successful development experiences, which helps in creating a successful economic and developmental model that will support the two parties in overcoming all challenges imposed on them by global economy and by conflicts and tensions in some countries. The Prime Minister affirmed that Bahrain supports all efforts aiming at establishing further regional and international economic and commercial cooperation. He also stated that the ambitions towards regional and international economic partnerships should be unlimited, urging everyone to focus on progress and to face challenges with further improvement to serve developmental and political re realities. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the forum in creating a platform for the establishment of joint ventures between the two parties, which will enhance relations between them. He also stressed the importance of establishing cooperation as the main aim in this stage and of involving the private sectors of the GCC countries in Turkey in establishing economic partnerships. He also reviewed a number of economic and commercial issues and the prospects of GCC-Turkish cooperation. The participants in the forum expressed thanks to His Royal Highness for the government's contribution in the success of the forum. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at the Ghadibiya Palace Emirati businessman dignitary Jama'a Al Majid, who is currently on a visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. He commended Al Majid's contributions in the commercial sector in and outside the United Arab Emirates and cited his other contributions that serve science and culture that was evident by his initiatives in establishing educational and cultural centers, as well as his interest in Arab and Islamic heritage. The Prime Minister also highlighted Al Majid's role in a trade and charity, which is a reflection of the UAE's prominent role in those fields. His Royal Highness also lauded the role of Dignitary Jamal al Majid Center for Cultural and Heritage for his keenness in Islamic heritage, wishing al Majid further progress and success. 
For his part, Jum'a al-Majid expressed his gratitude for meeting His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, hailing his role in supporting the brotherly ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the UAE. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has sent a cable to the President of the Republic of Lebanon, Michel Aoun, congratulating him on his election by the Lebanese Parliament yesterday. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince expressed his wishes of success and further development and progress to President Aoun and the Lebanese people, and also affirmed the Kingdom's aspirations to strengthen the relations between the two countries. Her Royal Highness Wife of His Majesty the King and the President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, patronized the third National Conference for Bahraini Women that started today. She stated that the Council continues its march in the context of its organizational work that qualifies it to become one of the most important mechanisms capable of putting into effect the principles included in the National Action Charter and the Constitution in the field of empowering women. Her Royal Highness stated the importance of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for Bahraini women in various fields, specifying his contributions in issuing laws and legislation supporting women march and creating the necessary legal infrastructure to enhance their ability of proving their competence of fully performing their social professional and family role and contributing in the prosperity of their country. His Royal Highness noted the importance of expediting the issuance of the second part of the family law to ensure the enhancement of stability in the Bahraini family. She also affirmed the importance of allocating a separate building for family courts that ensures the privacy of family issues and expediting their procedures. Princess Sabika also noted that the council is open for receiving opinions and suggestions that aim to enhance family stability. Her Royal Highness congratulated the members of legal and judicial institutions on achieving high positions and bid them to become more diligent in enhancing their presence at work. She also highlighted the importance of communication with the outside world through presenting the Kingdom's efforts and achievements in the field of women empowerment.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized today Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to attend the activities of the second GCC Turkish Business and Investment Forum. The forum is organized by Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Federation of GCC Chambers. It is hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain for two days at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center with the participation of 600 Bahraini Gulf and Turkish investors. The Deputy Premier conveyed the Prime Minister's greetings to the forum organizers and his wishes of success to the forum that strengthens cooperation between Gulf Cooperation Council countries and the Republic of Turkey in all investments and commercial fields. The Deputy Premier expressed pleasure in the Kingdom's hosting of the forum, which will achieve more convergence between businessmen and economic institutions between the GCC countries and Turkey. He also affirmed that the relation between the GCC and Turkey is witnessing a period of development and prosperity in all levels, which reflects the depth of uh, this relation. The Deputy Premier praised the successful experience that Turkey has in its economic growth that is based on on advanced policies and efficient expertise. He also expresses aspirations to arrive to agreements and formulas in all e economical sectors in a way that embodies the depth of the relation between the GCC and Turkey. The Deputy Premier affirmed that the Kingdom makes sure to support every effort that aims to expand the frames of cooperation with Turkey and other countries. He also called on the businessmen and investors to benefit from the inauguration of this forum and overcome obstacles that may hinder strengthening the foundations of the firm cooperation model. The second Turkey GCC Business and Investment Forum opened to a large high-profile crowd of Turkish and Bahraini officials and business people, with speeches from the chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Qatar Chamber of Commerce, and the Union of Chambers of Commerce and Commodity Exchange of Turkey, as well as the Turkish Minister of Customs and Trade and the Secretary General of the GCC. An opening panel and B2B sessions followed. The heads of states, uh, their majesties, really support the idea of partnership with the private sector and providing avenues for the private sectors to cooperate in achieving mutual uh, interests and prosperity for this vital uh, region. The, uh, this gathering comes within the framework of the strategic dialogue uh, which we enjoy with Turkey. Uh, that was launched since 2008. Uh, just recently, almost two weeks ago, we had a very good uh, ministerial meeting between the GCC uh, Ministers of Foreign Affairs and the uh, Turkish Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of Economy. Uh, and they have uh, reiterated the importance of supporting the private sectors. During the opening remarks, it was revealed that a free trade agreement between the GCC and Turkey will create a $2.5 trillion economic bloc, with a consumer market of 130 million people. Trade and investment between Turkey and the GCC has been growing steadily, rising from $1 billion in 2001 to $15 billion in 2015. Around 500 business people from Bahrain and the rest of the GCC are in attendance to network and do deals with the visiting Turkish delegation. The Turkish part uh, is uh, around 270 and headed by the Minister of uh, Custom and Trade and the uh, Chairman of the Chamber of Union uh, of the Turkish. And uh, it's a big delegate, 270. I think it's a great opportunity to the Gulf businessmen, especially Bahrain, to uh, take this opportunity and try to make uh, contacts and joint ventures as much as possible. This is what we are aiming to. The Turkey GCC Forum will continue tomorrow, with a number of panel sessions spanning a range of topics and sectors. Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, chaired today the weekly meeting where the Council discussed a report, a report on establishment and development of infrastructure in the areas of reconstruction based on the Decree 25 of 2015, and the Council approved the decree. The Council then approved a report regarding amending social security laws. The meeting also approved two reports regarding establishing and regulating Bahrain International Convention and Exhibition Center and one regarding reserves for future generations. The Council approved two proposals, one to stop raising rents of the traditional shops and another regarding investing real estate in Egypt. 
The meeting then approved issuing two parliamentary statements on a condemning the terrorist act conducted by the Houthi, ter Houthi terrorists on Mecca and another on condemning terrorist attacks and vandalism on educational buildings. Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah received at his office today a delegation of the European Parliament, which is currently visiting the country to hold a series of meetings with members of the Parliament as to enhance cooperation between Bahrain's Parliament and the Parliaments of the world. Speaker of the Representatives highlighted that the development Bahrain has experienced at all levels in recent years, especially in freedom and human rights. He praised the joint efforts of the legislative and executive authorities in strengthening these aspects under the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He affirmed the Council's readiness to answer all citizens' queries regarding local affairs, as well as its keenness on supporting the right of freedom of expression to follow the reform project of the Kingdom. He added that the Council continuously holds meetings with members of other parliaments of the world in order to promote parliamentary diplomacy and joint communication. For their part, the European Parliament delegation stressed the importance of cooperation and coordination between the two parties in order to achieve the desired results and exchange expertise. The Kingdom of Bahrain is a key partner of the European Union and uh, the main uh, trading partner of the Kingdom of Bahrain is the European Union. Uh, we are cooperating uh, closely on, uh, at the political level, on economic, uh, let's say, uh, uh, changes, uh, uh, considering, you know, uh, security and defense, on energy as well. The, there are uh, very much, uh, you know, uh, issues that are linking, you know, uh, the European Union and the Kingdom of uh, Bahrain. I think it's very important that we've heard about human rights in Bahrain. Uh, there's some uh, very positive moves in improving human rights. Um, which should address many of the criticisms leveled by the EU and, and the West about human rights. I think that is a, a great step in the right direction. It's good to have the cooperation. Bahrain is a very impressive country, very important. Um, I, I'm particularly impressed at the uh, treatment of religions here, all the same, all getting on together, uh, very harmonious in that sense. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities President Sheikh Hamay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa took part in the inauguration of the Sheikh Jabir Al Ahmed Cultural Center under the patronage of His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah. Attending the event also a number of cultural ministers and senior officials from the GCC and Arab countries. Sheikh Hamay emphasized that launching such centers reflects the GCC country's leadership's keenness of art and culture as it creates a fertile environment for generations to withstand cultural changes and to ground them in national heritage. The BACA president deemed Kuwait as a pioneer in its support of art and theater in the region and this center begins an outcome of the constant and direct interest by His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah. She also noted the importance of joint cultural work between the GCC countries that would reinforce the governmental orientation to revitalize the cultural tourism and the attraction of international tourism. The Sheikh Jabir Al Ahmed Cultural Center aims to shed light on the theatrical arts as well as being a center of historical documentations. <laughs> Ya Sayyidati Sadati Ba'ad